And hello again. Welcome to Ron Siegel Radio. This is the show with no real boundaries as we discuss current events, financial markets, politics, sports, even poking fun at the rest of the media. This is the show that connects the dots of confusion delivered by conflicting media reports. We connect the dots so you know the actions you can take. How your family or business can benefit from current events. Most of all, thank you for joining me. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day. We have a very focused show. We only chat about items that affect the roof over your head, your bank account, and anything I feel would benefit you. But before we get into our intriguing content today, please join me in welcoming our featured guest, first timer on Ron Siegel Radio. Tiffany, Tony is with us. Welcome. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Glad to have you with us. Let me remind you, if you ever have any more finance-related questions, I am the consumer advocate looking out for you, and you can reach out to me directly, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com. Just remember, that's the number you call anytime for assistance. When you call that number, it comes directly to me first. There are no operators standing by. I am it. While I do have a great team when it comes to developing a financing plan or plan to save you money, I personally work with you. Even if you don't have any needs today, save this number in your phone for future reference, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. And of course, we celebrate every day on Ron Siegel Radio. I, you know, I like to celebrate. Usually it's with a martini, but it's a little early for that today, so we'll just stick with checking out the daily celebration log for this wonderful day, mm. National Grammar Day. Yeah, I don't know if we're gonna go with that one. Marching Music Day, National Suns Day. I have three of them, so I guess I can go with National Suns Day, as long as they're not talking about the Phoenix variety. Yeah, I know. Hug a GI day. They might get a little upset if I tried to hug them, so I think I'll stick away from that one as well. Having beaten anorexia, you probably know that I will stick then with National Pound Cake Day. Yes, indeed. We'll go with the pound cake. Uh, put some strawberries on top of that, a lot of whipped cream, maybe a little Nutella. I, 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 I digress. I shouldn't go there. Let's take a look at what the markets are doing today. It's been another, it's been not a rocky road day today, not a rocky ride, I should say. Has not been rocky. Markets have been up all day long. We're up over 500 points as measured by the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Up 53 points on the S&P 500. The NASDAQ is up 130 points. Gold down $2. Oil down 42 cents. What is happening in the markets? Well, Pretty simple. It all has to do with Super Tuesday. And yes, I know it's Wednesday, so don't go calling me. Don't go putting messages up on the on the Facebook feed, which, by the way, you can put messages right there on the Facebook feed, Ron Siegel Radio on Facebook, and we'll be able to see those messages live here in the studio. But Super Tuesday, that's what it's all about. Bernie, he got the burn. Yeah, I think there's a problem with him. They're looking at him saying, you know something? I think Bernie might be getting knocked out. Didn't do quite as well as he was expecting or as he was hoping. Yeah, in Calizuela, we picked Bernie, but a lot of the rest of the country did not select Bernie. That's a good thing. We like to stay as a capitalistic society. We're not looking for all the garbage that Bernie is spewing. That's uh, another one of those good things. My ears are rattling here a little bit. I didn't even have the martini. My ears are still rattling. We got some craziness going on there. But the idea here is Bernie not doing nearly as well. We saw that Mayor Bloomberg, what is 700, you know, 700 million dollars just doesn't go quite as far as it used to. Apparently, he could not get hardly any traction in his campaign. For the White House, $700 million he spent. You know, for maybe 10% of that, I would have told him that he's worthless, right? But he had to wait until Super Tuesday to find the rest of the country tell him that. 
seven hundred million dollars. So he's now endorsing sleepy Joe Biden, who's not sure whether he's running for Senate or president. He's not sure if it's Super Tuesday or Super Thursday, but a lot of the country likes that apparently. They they don't want to know whether it's Super Tuesday or Super Thursday. But that's why the markets are doing so well. I'm looking at the healthcare stocks. They've really done well today because Medicare for all, which is good for nobody, apparently is going down to defeat. Just throw that out there because of the burn. Uh, Pocahontas, you know, she didn't get, get much traction either. She couldn't even win her own state. That's not a good piece of information for her, but we don't worry about that either. We're just the markets is what we've been watching. That's why we're talking about this whole idea. Let's see what else is going on in the daily briefing today. So we talk about uh, Bernie. He likes California. Maybe he'll buy another house here because I know that uh, in the debates he was saying that he's got to have several houses as a socialist. I'm figuring why is that. But he's got his Vermont house. He's got his summer house. He's got his D.C. house. Now he might want a California house because that's apparently who likes him is the California voter. We didn't. Thank, the one thing I'm really glad about, and I, I shared this with another individual that I'm friends with uh, in the media, I can actually start watching television again. I don't know about you, but I'm really, I was tired of seeing all of the loony Tom Steyer commercials, right? Maybe he's gone back into his cave in Northern California. Mayor Bloomberg, maybe he'll go back to one of his nine mansions and we won't see his commercials anymore. And being that California, we know we're going to vote for the Democrat, whoever the Democrat candidate might be. Look at the bright side. We might not have to have watch any more political commercials, and that is probably a good thing. Yeah, even our audience likes the idea of no commercials here. So that's a, that's a good one. So keep, let's see what else is going on in the news here. I uh, love looking at the pictures of, of, of Joe Biden screaming, not knowing what day it is. Bernie Sanders upset about everything. Then we I look, scroll down here a little bit further and, and just watching some of these things. Bloomberg, now, you ever seen anybody as stoic as Bloomberg? Now, you look at the pictures of him. He doesn't move his mouth. He doesn't laugh. He doesn't smile. Tells a joke. He doesn't know it's a joke. I, I just throw that out there. Fascinating. So we, well, we'll be interesting seeing what's going on with the president coming up out how he talks, no more mini Mike. Uh, we still have crazy Bernie, Pocahontas is still there. Uh, Joe doesn't know what day it is, so it doesn't matter there. What else is going on in the markets? How about the coronavirus? Can somebody help me please? You know, and I know we've got seven listeners this morning, but can somebody help me? I understand the idea of Costco running out of water, but running out of toilet paper, right? I mean, do we have to stockpile toilet paper? Now, if you didn't stockpile, you know, food, you're probably not going to have a whole lot of use for toilet paper. I I'm just throwing that out there. I am no doctor. We had a doctor here yesterday. I didn't ask him that question. But, you know, we know the coronavirus. It's here. It's going to go away in the next couple of months. It'll be back probably in the summer, in the winter time again. You know, we know that there's been more than 90,000 cases, 70 countries, 3,100 deaths. I get it. And I know that's why now is the time for you to be looking at your home financing because the markets are scared. When the markets are scared, that's a good time for you to act. You know, it's just one of those things. Now, the mortgage-backed securities, they're flat today. Ten-year treasury, it's at an all-time low. Actually, it was interday low early, more yesterday, but 0 0.963. If you're a senior citizen, that is painful, right? Because that's what you're living off of is that fixed income. And when you're getting less than 1%, that is not good. You're not going to you're not gonna have to worry about stockpiling toilet paper because you're not going to need any because you're not going to be around very long. You're not going to be eating very much. You might be, we might have to stockpile spam. Well, that might be an issue. By the way, spam and Beyond Meat, are they, is there any difference in those two? I, I just questioned that one there. Uh, yeah. Moving right along, let's see what else is in our daily briefing today. What we might want to be talking with you about. Ah, Joe Biden is always in the front runner status again. Fed slashed rates. Yes, I know they dropped him a half a point. 
If you are questioning whether that's going to have a major impact on home loans, I will be shooting a short video later today for you. So watch our social media channels. You'll see what the impact is from the Federal Reserve cutting that half point. But I will tell you this, the half point, I don't guarantee a whole heck of a lot on Ron Segal Radio, but that half point reduction is going to have no effect on the coronavirus. I'm just going to tell you that it's not like a, a vaccine it doesn't work that way. It's not going to do anything there, so just beware. Ooh, did you watch this one? I, and, and here's another one. i, I, I got to love this. So we have a deadly tornado in Tennessee, and a federal judge says we must keep the, the, the voting booths open an extra two hours. What effect does that have on the voting booths? Right? I mean, if you're going to go vote, if the voting booth is gone, if it was lifted in the tornado, it's gone. It's not coming back in two hours, Judge. I'm just throwing that out there that it may not have an issue. You know, I'm, I'm just a simple guy. But maybe somebody else can help me with this one. Ah, moving right along, what else is going on? Russian President Vladimir Putin proposes attaching a constitutional ban on same-sex marriage to a broader referendum that would keep him in power past 2024. What does same-sex marriage have to do with keeping Vladimir Putin in office? Right, that's Russia. They tell you what you're going to do anyway. If they don't like it, they shoot you. That's not the United States. So I, I wonder what, why is that even in the briefing? Uh, president Trump makes a first direct phone call by a U.S. president to a Taliban leader. I guess he wanted to fight. You know, I, you know I'm just going to throw this out there. So he, the president calls the Taliban leader. And then a couple hours later, we see that we had a U.S. airstrike on the Taliban. Do you think they had caller ID and they were triangulating where the guy was? I'm just questioning that one right there. Hasn't come out that he's gone yet, but it could be the case. You're listening to Ron Segal Radio discussing your real estate current events and the financial markets. When we come back, we've got a great broadcast lined up for you. Although I say that every day, I think it's kind of funny when, when broadcasters say that. See, I'm in on the production of it, and then I tell you it's a great broadcast. Seems a little... Uh, you know, should straightforward, it should be. We're going to talk about real estate is soaring, but not like 2008. Qu re listener question, I filed bankruptcy and can't get approved for a credit card. Hey, for those of you that are watching us, ronsegalradio.tv, you can see the new book we're going to talk about, The Beauty of Your Strength. Well, no one's ever accused me of beauty, so <laughs> can we put beauty and the beast? I, 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 maybe, maybe someone would get upset with that. You can reach me anytime, our off-air number, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio on Twitter, at Ron Siegel. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, shame on you. But the replay will be available, Ron Siegel 1 on YouTube. Ron Siegel, the number one on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. We are clear. Yes.
trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day. The Mortgage Minute today being brought to you by our friends at Gold Star Mortgage. When you're ready for that next mortgage, Gold Star has the programs and the products. You got the phone. Call me, 800-306-1990. I will put you in touch with the right folks. You can text me. You can email me. You can send a courier pigeon, however you want to reach us. It's fine. Dow Jones Industrial Average now up 540 points, S&P 500. It is up 51 points. The NASDAQ up 139 points. We're getting a little theory here. What's going on? Everything's up. Mortgage-backed securities are up two basis points. Don't worry about the basis point thing. It just means it's up very little. The 10-year Treasury down five basis points. That's the yield. It's down as well. So here's the issues that you need to know because as I share with you on a regular basis, all that information is available on the super secret website, google.com. What you tune in to Ron Siegel Radio for is the why. Why is all of this happening? Well, yesterday the Fed cut rates by 50 basis points. I'd like to say it's like a Three Stooges type move, and I should have the soundtrack on here from the Three Stooges. I used to have it on there, but maybe I don't. Maybe I'll get it back. Fed rate cut is not going to help things and certainly is not a vaccine for the coronavirus. All it did was show that the Fed does not know what to do, and yesterday the Fed cut rates by 50 basis points in a Three Stooges-like move. Fed rate cut is not going to help things, certainly not a vaccine. All it did, again, I, I'm... Well, I think I'm saying the same things over. My, my report might have been uh, duplicated. The wild ride, though, is continuing in the market today with stocks rebounding roughly 500 points, but bonds don't believe the rally. Mortgage-backed securities, again, they are up a little bit. The 10-year is settling fresh new all-time lows. Mortgage Bankers Association reported that mortgage application volume was up 15.1% last week. Applications to purchase a home were down 3%, still up 10% year over year. Refinances have soared, as we mentioned. You got to do that strategically, get it the right way. First two jobs reports was released. This first of two jobs reports released this morning. ADP report showed that there were 183 job creations in the month of February, stronger than expectations of 170 to 175,000. Last month's report, however, was revised lower by 82,000 jobs. Now, let's think about that. They missed the number by 82,000 jobs. If I got my numbers wrong by 82,000, that's like 30%. I think we might have a real problem there, but that's the way the economists work. That is the Mortgage Minute brought to you by our friends at Gold Star Mortgage. When you're ready for that next mortgage, Gold Star, they've got the programs and the products. You just need to make the call, 800-306-1990. This morning, we've got our featured guest in the studio with us. And I just looked at the back of this book, and I, I love this concept because in this day and age when we listen to Looney Tom Steyer and we listen to some of the, all the political garbage, and I'm not sure it matters what side of the aisle you're on, there's a lot of political garbage out there that nobody wants to hear, nobody cares about, especially you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And I look at this book, and it says, The Beauty of Your Strength, a 30-day guide filled with positive affirmations. Welcome, Tiffany Tony. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. So how? what made you decide to write this book? Well, I couldn't agree with you more in terms of um, the negativity that exists all over television, all over social media. And for me, um, I found myself sort of climbing into a hole, and I just felt like I was experiencing one obstacle on top of another in life, and I felt really beaten down. And then as I started sort of confiding in people about that, I realized that I wasn't alone in that. So I was like, you know, if, if this is a gift that I have, if I am a good writer, then I need to use that gift to help people and help them empower themselves. So, yeah. That's nice. I mean, because, you know, it's, it's I, I look at the social media channels anymore and, yeah, we've got a few, you know, uh, a little community that we've built on, on social media. Yeah. But you hear, you know, you very rarely, I mean, I know one person, my son Mitchell, who comes up with a positive affirmation every morning and posts something really positive. And I hear people all over the community making comments about, you know, it's nice to see that. Right, absolutely. And then it's followed right by somebody who's complaining about this or complaining about that or somebody cut them off on the streets. And, and right. 
we don't think about the fact that, you know, so maybe they're having a bad day. Absolutely. And I think, you know, let's be real. We can't avoid negative experiences. It's sure. just part of life. And we're not going to like everybody that we meet. We're not always going to be positive people. But if we can try to find the silver lining in situations that we're experiencing, then I think it just, it makes life better for everyone, you know? It, it, and you know something that sometimes it's with the individuals that, you know, maybe they're not as, as, as accomplished, right? They've got a more subtle way about them. Mm -hmm. And all they do, if you, if you kind of, I shouldn't say program them, but you'd kind of program them Absolutely. to write, you know, here's, you know, let's talk about the positive of everybody yeah. and look for the positive. For sure. For sure. And I mean, I, like I said, I'm not one to judge. I was in a position in life where I was drowning in negativity. And then one morning I heard this voice be it God or consciousness or whatever you want to call it, it sure. woke me up and it was like, write this down. And so every morning for about six months, I was getting these like positive messages and I was writing them down and I knew I was like being helped and guided to write these. And so at the end of all of this, I was like, well, what do I do with, the, with these affirmations that I've written? And I posted a few of them on Instagram and people responded really positively. And then a publishing company reached out after seeing them and they were like, Hey, you know, is this, are you serious about making this a book? What do you want to do with this? We really like it, you know? And from there I was like, okay, this is an opportunity to, to help heal myself and to give other people the tools to do the same. So let's, so, you know, one of, part of what you said there, a lot of folks don't understand, I think, because you know, I yeah. see, I talk to a lot of different people around the, around the state, you know, and in the, some of the speaking that we do and people don't realize that there's opportunity if you keep your eyes open. Absolutely. There's opportunity everywhere we go, as long as we're open to it and, and we're looking for it. And isn't it nice once that opportunity comes in a positive light? Absolutely. Right? I mean, your book yeah. here, um, you know, I haven't, obviously I haven't read it. I don't know how to read if it's... Uh, <laughs> um, well, guess what? That's your copy now. Oh, so. thank you. I'll have to find somebody who can read to me. I'll, uh, I'll read it to you. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, so, but but I, I look at the way you've done this, and you've got the affirmation at the beginning, and then space for someone to put, you know, how this, what, what it means to me. How do I, how did I internalize it? Absolutely. And I, you know, at first I just had the affirmation and then I had, you know, questions for the reader to answer. But when I was speaking to the publisher and, and speaking to myself, I realized that I needed to be more vulnerable and actually talk to the readers about my own life experience and to share with them that, you know, I'm not perfect. And I've felt alone. I felt beaten down by society. I've felt you know, as though I didn't know what my purpose was. And I think a lot of people feel that way and they just need to know they're not alone and that there are solutions, you know, that we can find within ourselves. So as long as you're listening and, and I like the idea that you wrote, wrote these things down as they're coming to you mm -hmm. so that you can, you know, that you, you get to re re refresh or, or review. Absolutely. We're going to talk more with Tiffany Tony about the beauty of your strength. Find out where that title came from as well. You can reach me anytime. Our off-air number, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsegalradio.com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio on Twitter, at Ron Siegel. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel 1 on YouTube. Ron Siegel, the numeral one on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. We're clear. Good job. Thank nice. You.
questions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message and I will be delivering it every day. The Real Time Real Estate segment today being brought to you by the Area Trusted Real Estate Professionals of Ron Siegel Radio. Text NEST, N-E-S-T to 79564. Find your dream home before someone else does. If you already have your dream home, text SLT Home Digest to 79564. SLT Home Digest. Find out exactly what the county recorder knows about your property. Find out what the market thinks about your property. It's all there. Real estate is soaring, but not like 2008. Unlike last year, the residential real estate market kicked off 2020 with a, a with, oh, you gotta, I gotta get this on, with a bang. Not that bang, guys. In their latest monthly mortgage monitor, Black Knight proclaimed, and I quote, the housing market is heating, entering 2020, and recent rate declines could continue that trend, a sharp contrast to the strong cooling that was seen at this same time last year. Zillow revealed they're also seeing a robust beginning to the year. Jeff Tucker, Zillow economist, said, quote, our first look at 2020 data suggests that we could see the most competitive home shopping season in years as buyers are already competing over homes for sale, unquote. Buying demand is very strong. The latest showing index from Showing Time reported a 20.2% year-over-year increase in purchaser traffic across the country. That's sixth consecutive month of nationwide growth and the largest increase in the history of the index. The even better news is that buyers are not just looking. The latest existing home sales report from the National Association of Realtors showed that closed sales increased 9.6% from a year ago. This increase in overall activity has caused Zellman Associates to increase their proje projection for home price appreciation in 2020 from 3.7% to 4.7%. Are we headed for another housing crash like we had last decade? Whenever price appreciation bins begins to accelerate, the fear of the last housing boom and bust creeps into the minds of the American population. The pain felt during the last housing crash scared us deeply and understandably so. The crash led us into the Great Recession of 2008. If we take a closer look, however, we can see the current situation is nothing like it was the last decade. As an example, let's look at price appreciation for the six years prior to the last boom, 2006, and compare it to the last six years. If you are watching us on ronsegalradio.tv, you will see that I've got a chart showing these numbers for you. There's a stark difference between these two time periods. Normal appreciation, 3.6%. So while current appreciation is higher than the historic norm, it's certainly not accelerating beyond control as it did leading up to the housing crash today. The strength of the housing market is actually helping prevent a setback in overall economy. In a recent post, Odetta Kushi, Deputy Chief Economist for First American, explained, and I quote again, while the housing crisis is still fresh on the minds of many, and was the catalyst of the Great Recession, the U.S. housing market has weathered all other recessions since 1980. With the, great except, with the exception of the Great Recession, house price appreciation hardly skipped a beat, and year over year, existing home sales growth barely declined in all the other previous recessions in the last 40 years. In 2020, we argue the housing market is more likely poised to help stave off recession than fall victim to it, the bottom line, the year has started off very nicely for the housing market. If you're thinking of buying or selling, give me a call, 800-306-1990. Let's chat about it. Let's see what's right for you, what's right for your family. That's the Real-Time Real Estate segment. Again, brought to you by the Real Estate Professionals of Ron Siegel Radio. Text NEST, N-E-S-T, to 79564. Find your dream home before someone else does. SLT Home Digest to 79564. We're going to continue our conversation. Tiffany Tony is the author of The Beauty of Your Strength. If you're watching us again, ronsegalradio.tv, you can actually see the book right here, the author right there next to us. So you were talking before, and, and I, during the break I mentioned to you, I have this problem that I like to talk to myself, and I hear these voices, and it scares people when they, if, they, if I ever tell them what those voices say. But 
your book is all about positivity. Absolutely. I think we all hear voices. It's just a matter of which ones we want to entertain, you know? Oh, is that it? Okay. I think so. I mean, I can only speak for myself. Uh, <laughs> so you entertain the good ones. I, yes, I get it. Yes. Okay. So tell me a little bit, how did, what your life experiences to get to this point, to writing this book. Wow. Um, so I grew up in a military family. Okay. We moved a lot. And, um, you know, when you move a lot, it's you're constantly adjusting and adapting and trying to find yourself in the midst of every new place that you're living in. And that can be a lot sometimes for a kid, you know, and um, I just, as I, you know, realized, okay, I'm an adult now. I live in California. I'm, I'm making my own choices. And throughout all of that, I faced a lot of obstacles back to back to back. And I started dealing with depression in a way that wasn't really healthy. And I realized, okay, I'm in this place that feels like rock bottom. And how do I, how do I pull myself up from here? And as I started confiding, you know, with close friends about this, I realized that a lot of them were going through the same thing, wow. but they weren't telling anyone. And they were posting on social media as if everything was okay, as we all do, I think, all the time. Sure. And I realized that a lot of us were just going through life faking it. And I said, I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to fake it anymore. I really, I do want to heal from the negative experiences and relationships and things that have left me, I guess, scarred, so to say. And I, I realized that I wasn't alone in that. And so. That's um, kind of fascinating because you don't usually associate vulnerability with somebody that comes from a military family background. Absolutely. And, you know, it's interesting you say that because I think that whole, um, perspective of what it means to be militant is like that everyone's always strong and no one has any vulnerabilities. But the fact of the matter is that a lot of us are just faking it to get by. And so we have all these traumas that stack up on top of each other and we just bury them because we're like, well, I still have to go to work or I still have to raise my kid or I still have to, you know, um, put on a smile for social media today. And so we bury all of these things that have happened to us and then we never address them. And then eventually the weight becomes heavy and at some point or another we have to address those things you that's know? the that's the interesting part is at some point and a lot of people don't want to realize that at some point we have to address the issue for sure and unfortunately in a lot of the military world we're seeing way too many of them addressing it the wrong way yeah and i think ptsd is a real thing not just for people who have who have been in the military but for all of us i mean sure from relationships that have gone wrong domestic violence or you know being in a traumatic um situation with maybe a single parent home or whatever it is right. that was traumatic to you, you're going to suffer PTSD if you don't address it. So how does the book help us get through, get, uh, open up a little bit? How does that, how does the book do that for us? So the book um, consists of a positive affirmation that okay. the readers have access to every day. And I share a little bit of vulnerability about myself uh, within each chapter. And then I ask the reader three questions that, force them to kind of look within and to ask themselves, you know, how do I heal from this? Are there traumas that I haven't addressed? And what does this positive affirmation mean to me? And how does it resonate with me? So it really forces the reader to, to take an honest look and have conversations with themselves that maybe they were putting off. Does it uh, give us any indication of how we might open up a little bit? Maybe we might open ourselves to being a little vulnerable. Absolutely. Absolutely. The, the affirmations, actually encourage vulnerability. Um, you know, a saying that I always heard growing up was the truth hurts. Sure. But I think the truth only hurts if we're lying to ourselves, you know, and so we have to stop doing that. We have to start being honest and getting to the root of, of who we are and figuring that out through conversations with ourselves. And that's pretty much what this book is. It's a conversation with the readers having a conversation with themselves. Do the chapters grow on each other? Because I mean, I look at here and there's 30 chapters. Yeah. So but what do we do after 30? I mean, I, I still got those voices talking at me. <laughs> well, it is a 30 day guide. Okay. Um, you can do all 30 days in a row or you can read one chapter a week, you know, however is convenient for your schedule. But the good news is, Ron, that I will be writing another one. Oh, nice. So I won't leave you hanging. Okay, good. So, so if, you know, if I can get. If I can read 30 chapters. I haven't read 30 chapters. They're very and, short chapters, two to three pages. And they got big types yeah. so I can actually see them too. Exactly. I thought about you. All right. <laughs> nice. Yeah, and I kid people all the time because I, I, I literally I don't read anything other than maybe some of the stuff for our show. 
I'm an Audible type person, so I love gotcha. books. But well, it will be coming to Kindle soon. So if you want to do that, um, or I can just, you know what, I'll do a voice recording of each <laughs> chapter specifically for you. There we go. Do you do you <laughs> have, do you have a, a social media channel or a group on Facebook where people can go and? Um, so the book is actually on Amazon. Okay. And people can find it there. Um, the Beauty of Your Strength, Tiffany Tony. And I am on Instagram. I'm, I am on other social media platforms, but my Instagram is Tiffany underscore Tony underscore TV. TV? Yeah. So you do TV too? I do. We're going to talk about that when we come <laughs> back. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate, current events, and the financial markets more with Tiffany Tony. We'll chat with you then. And I've also got a, a quick little story that we'll try and get in. I don't know if I'll get it in or not, but it is a listener question. I filed for bankruptcy and can't get approved for a credit card. What do I do? We're going to talk about it. You can reach me anytime. Our off-air number, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash Ron Siegel Radio on Twitter at Ron Siegel. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel one on YouTube. Ron Siegel, the number one on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. We're clear.
planning. So if you want more information on that, if you want to get more money for college, just give me a call, 800-306-1990. We'll show you how to get the free money. And today is the last day for Girl Scout cookies this year. We've got our double dipping once again. Helps my, my waistline when I talk about Girl Scout cookies the way we do them. Tiffany, you like the way we do them on Ron Siegel Radio because there's no calories in the ones that I do. So the way we do this is you send us any amount of money, $5, $25, whatever it is. We take it over to a local young lady here in Yorba Linda, California. She buys the cookies, and the agreement that I have with her family, with her and her family, is every cookie that we buy, they take over to, this year we're going to Orangewood Home. right? So we're going to benefit the foster kids, the program over there. They get the cookies. We don't have the waistline issues. Everything is good for everybody. And if you buy five boxes, $25. Ron Siegel Radio, we're going to send you a $100 restaurant, dining guru restaurant certificate. So everybody wins. And, it, you know, you want to go to one of those healthy places if you want to worry about your waistline. I obviously don't. So the Girl Scout cookie today is the last day. We're going to continue our conversation. Tiffany, Tony, you were talking before the break. You started telling me you're on TV too? Yes, yes. I work as a writer uh, and a producer of content. And a film that I worked on um, – called Lazarus actually just screened at the Pan-African Film Festival, which is a festival um, that promotes diversity in film. And um, we are working on right now, figuring out where that film is gonna go, whether it's gonna be on Netflix or Hulu or uh, one of the other streaming platforms. We're hoping to know something um, in the next month or so, so that we can sort of let people know and, and we're hoping to have it in theaters as well. So, so you wrote it? I did not actually write that one. Um, I, I did help with production on that. And I have a couple lines in the film as well. Nice. As an actress, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, but what I did write is Jade Rising, and it's a sci fi miniseries okay. that is on um, Instagram TV or IGTV, as okay. people call it. So people can watch that on my uh, Instagram page. Tell us that page name again Tiffany underscore Tony underscore TV. On Instagram. Darn, I'd, I'd have to write that one down just because it takes me forever. <laughs> Tiffany I'll under I'll email it to you. Wait a second. We've got it here. Let, let me just, you know something? I might have to go, and we'll, we'll see if I can get this. Uh, every once in a while on social media. Whoa. Hello there. Something just went. <laughs> Those voices in my head again. They're talking to me. So, Tiffany, I'm going to try and see if I can figure out how to get this to, to appear right here on okay. the bottom of our screen. All right. So, we're going to put in here, follow Tiffany at... You said it's Tiffany underscore Tiffany underscore T O N E Y T O N E Y underscore T V T V uh -huh. on Instagram. Yes. Let's see if that'll will that pop up on our screens right now. Maybe. Look at right there. It is right there on the oh, crawler. What do you know? Look at that. So we're able every you know every <laughs> once in a while that the technology works for us. So you can so you can actually see the, your whole show right there on Absolutely. on Instagram. Yeah, the episodes are anywhere from three to five minutes long. They're short, and there's ten of them. So this wait for week, my attention span. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, this week, episode four is dropping. And okay. it's amazing, and I'm not just saying that because I'm in it. But so it's kind of like when I say that we've got a great show lined up because I I wrote it. Absolutely. Okay, so so you're doing the same. I got to take advantage, right? There you go. <laughs> so what what is the it's sci-fi? Yeah. So the premise is. Um, this guy, he falls in love with this woman, and she... That's new. I know, right? That's, That's very creative. so original, right? <laughs> um, she dies, and so uh -oh. he builds a time machine to bring her back to try to rekindle their love and start fresh. But there's a twist, of course, because it's a sci-fi. So you've got to watch to find out. Got to watch to find out what the twist is. Yes, okay. Absolutely. The only twist I know about is on my vodka, but we're not going to go there today. <laughs> it's Fashion. early for vodka. It, it, it's well, not even 10 a.m., Ron. I, well, that's okay. It's always time for vodka. It's 5 o'clock somewhere, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're, that's, you know something? And we've got that right here lined up for the, for the end of the broadcast today. So we must uh, know my, my secrets I'm here. I'm a psychic. <laughs> and, and you know something? We've got something in common because you're psychic and people tell me I'm psycho. So oh, it's oh, all... Close enough. I, exactly. I guess that's... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so so the book, so what's your next book? When's it going to come out? So I'm actually working on my next book now. Um, I haven't decided what the title will be yet, but I know it's going to stay along the same lines of um, positivity and just encouraging people to find their best selves. 
with the next book, I really want to talk about finding uh, finding purpose because a lot of us work jobs that we hate. Let's be honest. Sure. I mean, except for you, of course. Have fun. But um, yeah, and I think everybody deserves that in life to find a way to make their passion their career. And so that's really what I want to focus on with the next book. And that is so important. I, I tell people that one all the time. I, I've tell, told my own kids the same thing. If you're not out there having, if you don't enjoy what you do every day, now don't worry about the money. Yeah. Money follows, will follow you. If you go out and have a good time every day, if you're not having, getting up and dreading, you know, if Sunday night comes and you're saying, oh gosh, I have to get up tomorrow and go to work. Absolutely. Right, that's you're a horrible way to live. Way. Right. I've been there. Yeah. Have so you ever been there? I have. Yeah. I have. You know, there's there's some areas, and generally, what I do is I just get rid of it. Right. right? Uh, yeah. You know, you go and you go a different direction, and you say, you know, something. I'd rather make a little less and have a better quality of life because I can't be good to my family if I'm a, an unhappy, miserable sob. Absolutely. Right. So. I also wanted to say I don't know if you like the cover or not, but I really like the cover of the book. Yeah. And I just had to say that I wanted to thank James Black, who actually did the photo shoot and designed this cover for me. He's amazing. Um, and China McCoy, as well as R.L. Scott, who is my mentor. These guys have supported me so much through this process. And I just another tidbit or a little bit of advice is just find a core group of people who believe in what you're doing and love you. And you don't need 300 friends. I mean, if you want to have them on social media, that's fine. But just finding a small core group of people who allow you to be vulnerable and be yourself and really push you to be the best version of yourself. That's really what helped me to get And that's a, that's a great, so. great, great counsel. I mean, I, we've got 50, 60,000 connections on social media, mm -hmm. but that's not a core group of people. Absolutely. Right? I mean, I, I'd love to meet everybody, but I've probably met 5%, 1%, <laughs> something like that, right? Yeah. And I can't remember anybody because I don't even remember myself even looking in the mirror. <laughs> right, so the idea is what you're right is find that small group of people that are going to tell you like it is, yeah, and give you a kick in the backside when you need it, absolutely, and be real. Yeah, great information. I love the uh, concept here. I hope you'll get a copy, your copy. I got mine. <laughs> Amazon.com, I guess, is the place to get it. The yes. Beauty of Your Strength. Tiffany Tony is the author. Go get it where great books are sold, and remember. Set that first radio preset button to come back here every day to join Ron Siegel Radio, where we only speak about items affecting your house and your bank account. Thanks to all of our sponsors. A big thanks to John, who's engineering us today. And, of course, a special thanks to you for spending a little bit of your day with us. That's all for Ron Siegel Radio. Again, if you have any questions or going to meet any of our guests, call me anytime. 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990. Or ronsiegelradio.com. And remember... Make a lot of money so you can help a lot of people and have a lot of fun. Have a great day. We will talk to you next time on Ron Siegel Radio. Bye.